Hi everyone, welcome to another live ukulele jam with me, Matt Stead, this sunny Monday evening from here in the UK. Hope you're all keeping well. As with always, there's always a ton of buffering at the start of um, the broadcast. So just going to play a quick um, piece of music, just something really simple, just um, just abide our time and then we shall crack on with Canna Capilla. If you could just let us know if the volume levels are OK, guys, that would be absolutely fantastic. I thought I'd just change the angle so you can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So some badly played Espanoleta. Espanoleta? I'm probably saying that terribly. Um, it's a lovely piece, uh, this one actually, and this is from um, Jeff's book. So I thought every week, rather than kind of just me noodling away at my own stuff, it might be nice to kind of promote some of my fellow ukulele player stuff. So this is a brilliant book, um, our graded repertoire for ukulele, um, classical ukulele. And it's really amazing because it starts with some really simple grade one pieces like uh, Hall of the Mountain King and, and um, Green Sleeves. And then it goes on some really kind of fantastic complex um, classical music. And, and usually this one's uh, written for low G. Uh, actually, that's probably why it sounded funny. <laughs> I realised that I've got the baritone version out, and I was playing from the baritone version. But my uh, there is a there is a low G version which is over there somewhere. That explains a lot. I thought it sounded different to how I normally play it. But yeah, available for low D baritone and low G tenor ukulele, and well, any low G ukulele. Absolutely fantastic, Jeff Peterson, and you can get that from his brilliant ukulelecorner.com. So um, check it out. It's a really um really nice really nice website and we all know Jeff he's a wonderful human being isn't he so how are you all doing hope it's all hope you're all keeping well over there oh I've missed loads of messages Rebecca's gonna join us later hi Karen hi Leslie Karen I hope you're not sick of me she's seen me twice today <laughs> hi Pam over there up there in Yorkshire oh I put Leslie on twice there we go so good we put you on twice Leslie there we go. Hi, Indrani. There we go. Yeah, and as Indrani says, buffering should settle down any moment now we've got going. Hi, Mike. Hi, Peter. It's finally gone. Actually, it's starting to get dark over here. I guess the nights are starting to come in as well. And huzzah! Esther's back! <laughs> All those all those nice messages we sent you, Esther, we had to pull you back. Pull you back in. You can never escape. <laughs> Glad it's absolutely amazing to have you back. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Joseph. There we go. Esther will be bored of me today as well. <laughs> Fantastic. 
Oh, Karen, it's a great book, isn't it? Absolutely wonderful. We'll do some of that soon. It's a, it's a brilliant um, it's a brilliant one. It helps if you play from the the actual low G one on a low G U rather than the baritone. Oh. <laughs> um, talking of books, just before we get cracking, if anyone's interested, um, my book is here. It's arrived. So um, this is my new finger style book. Um, ten arrangements. Um, original ukulele arrangements for you and a bit like Jeff's book um, they're, they're not specifically graded but they start from easy and they get harder and harder um, there's a section in the front all about how to play chord melody then every single piece has um, glossary and everything and all that and every single piece has these song notes where I go into a lot of detail about how to play it kind of illustrated and then we've got pieces arranged. I've done individual arrangements for high G and low G. So, um, and they are different. They're specifically arranged for those instruments. So sometimes you kind of get one that's kind of made for both and it doesn't really work for either. So I've done different arrangements for those. So a lot of these you recognize things like lonely waltz. Um, and then it gets, we've got some really complex pieces in the back. I, I've done my version of Cider with Rosie, which has got quite a lot going on in the wedding. So anyway, this is available on my website, mattsteadukulele.com, if you are interested. Okay, onwards and upwards. <laughs> so yeah, me too. Me too, Peter. He's a great, great guy. Um, really excited. He's done a couple of um, tracks for my new album. He's put some guitar on it, which is really exciting. So I've got some other people doing some bits and bobs on it as well. So I've um, got a lovely classical guitar piece um, track. Sorry, a lovely classical guitar track that Paul's done for one of my songs. Um, Paul Mansell, which was lovely, that arrived today. So that's great. So yeah, fantastic. And just one little reminder that um, next Wednesday we've got our next live lesson where we're doing Duke Ellington's Caravan. I'm super excited about this one. So we've got a full chord melody um, version of Caravan that we're going to learn um, all together. That's a week Wednesday, so 20th of September, 3.30. Hi Margaret. Hi Andre. Ah, oh, good to see so many of you here. That's amazing. I hope you're all doing well. So tonight we've got we've got a really exciting mix tonight. Is it, I I kind of feel like I'm I seem to be getting more and more eclectic. I'm not doing it on purpose. It just seems to be um working out that way. So we've got um we've got a song from the Lemonheads and John Denver. We've got a song from the Blue Oyster Cult. That was your people's choice. We're going to do Don't Fear the Reaper. And, um, oh, and a really beautiful one by R.E.M. as well. So some really, really unusual but beautiful songs tonight, which is which is fantastic. Hopefully you all know how it works now and you've downloaded the sheets. Um, if you haven't, they're still available. You can find the links in the comment and the description. And I'll keep them up on screen uh, a little bit as well so you can see what's going on. And unlike most um, sheet music, what we do is we use these chord boxes in Canicapilla and it's all about starting you to play a little bit more naturally without following lyrics with the chords written above them. So every one of these boxes is a measure and unless I tell you otherwise we're in 4-4 time. So we simply play each of the chords in each box for four beats. Okay, simple as that. And the numbers refer to where those chords fall in a particular key. So every key of music has um, seven natural chords that come up. So for instance, in the key of C, that's C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and B diminished. And they always come up in that order as well. All right, the first, the fourth, and the fifth are always majors. Second and the third are minors, and the sixth. And the seventh is that unusual diminished chord. Sometimes songwriters like to do something unusual and they'll muck about with those chords. So you see in this one, the second chord, we have a C major 7 instead of a C major, which is really simple. This first one's really, really lovely because the chord progression is really gentle, but it does this really kind of beautiful little um, melody thing. I'll just play you a little bit. It has this lovely...
Ah, oh, Peter, sorry to be distracted. I'm distracted for good reason. I would absolutely love you to do that, mate. Um, I'll send you some ideas. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, hopefully in about a month or so. I've just got a few folks doing some more tracks for me. So, um, yeah. Esther's promised me a recorder part. I'm going to hold you to that, Esther. So I'm excited to hear what that sounds like. Um, so that that's so these are our chords then. Now this one's quite a fast tempo. We've got four beats on each. And there's various ways you can play this in terms of a strum. I like to keep it nice and simple and do a walk running 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 walk running 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 walk running 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 walk running running running. What do I mean by that? Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. <laughs> now don't sweat it I, you know me i'm not massively into scrum patterns if you find it easier just strum quick down strums will be absolutely fine as well or you could do up and down whatever works for you but i like to think about it as rhythms walk running 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 walk running 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 down So that makes our intro. We have C for a measure. That's your bog standard C. C major seven is like a C, but we're on the second fret. It adds a B note to a C chord. That's why it's called a major seven, because the B note is the seventh note in the key of C. Then finally, we go to an A minor. Just finger up there. Okay. Notice there's two measures for those A minor. So C major 7, A minor. We do that again. That's simple, right? That's how these chord patterns work. Oh, by the way, this one is my bean sprout. Yeah, um, Esther's right. This one's my bean sprout 500. Sounds like something from a sci-fi film, doesn't it? Bean Sprout 500. Um, it's called the 500 because it was the 500th ukulele that Aaron Kaim ever made. You can see there in the sound hole somewhere. It says number 500. So it's an extra special one for him. And um, Aaron Kaim's a, a wonderful, wonderful ukulele builder. Um, builds for Bean Sprout Ukulele. It's his own company. Used to build for Mahomoe Ukulele back in the day. And he likes to use some really interesting woods. You've got a lovely mosaic on this one. This one's got a, ro um, a redwood top and then English walnut back and sides. And the reason it has this really groovy scratch plate is that redwood is really soft, so you get dimples and marks. So with my super long nails, I can scratch away at this and never really damage it, which is cool. So yeah, he's brilliant. He's actually an amazing claw hammer ukulele player as well. And he's coming to play at the Ukulele Festival of Great Britain and teach at our retreat next year. So you're gonna have you're gonna be sport for, for choice um next year, but he's gonna be an amazing player. He is an amazing player, he's gonna be with us. Um and he's also gonna be doing um a ukulele luthier talk as well, so it's gonna be fantastic as well. Anyway, sorry, I, I'm rambling. Okay, so that's your intro. That's also the start to the verse. C, C major seven, A minor. Then we have this lovely F G. The change chord in any key is the four chord. I name it the change chord because it kind of feels like the song's changing when it hits it. Adds a bit of variety without being too kind of offensive or, or tense. So we have an F, the change chord. Then we've got a G chord. The five chord in any key, C, D, E, F, G, adds a sense of tension. And you'll notice that it often comes before the one chord, which we have here. Now here, can you see how we've got C for just two beats, because it's only half a measure. C major seven again, and then to that A minor. So that's one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. That's the hardest bit in the song, probably. So that line will be F, G, C, C major 7, A minor. And then to finish it 
of F, G. And then the pattern you just did, you do in reverse, A minor, C major 7. And then immediately after that, we do another interlude. So as soon as you finish any of these verses, you're going to hit that C, C major 7, A minor. Let's do a verse and a, and a chorus so you can see how this works. Let's give it a go. One, two, one, two, three. Always had a roof above me, always paid my rent. But I never set foot inside a tent. Couldn't build a fire or save my life. I lied about being the outdoor type. Then we go to another verse. And that's most of the song. It just goes round and round, um, this one. This one's by the Lemonheads. You know, they famously did that cover of... Um, uh, Mrs. Robinson, didn't they? The Simon and Garfunkel cover. That was like their big hit in the 90s. Uh, this was from their album Car Button Cloth, um, 1996, this one. I grew up with Lemonheads. I was really lucky. Um, I got to play with Evan Dando from the Lemonheads. He did a solo show in Bristol and I got to be his support act for two nights. It was like really, really special moment for me because I love these songs. And this one's this one's just a funny song about he lies he lies to his sweetheart about being a, being the outdoor type. It's, it's all a bit of a, a fool. And um, when I went down to for my geography field trip when I was I think eighteen I think it might be last year of um, A levels before going to university. Um, the I was a bit of a teacher's pet. And she let me sit in the front of the minibus and I was in control of the stereo. And I told everyone the whole term about how I could do all these amazing things outdoors and how I was going to look after everyone. And then I put this as the first song on the stereo to see whether people fell for it or not. OK, anyway, let's have a look at the bridge bit next. So the bridge bit um, only comes up once and that's quite common in a song. So it just adds a bit of variety. And unusually, normally when we go to the bridge, we tend to have the change chord leading things off, which would be the four, um, the four chord, which would be F in this key, or we have the relative minor. Don't worry too much about the theory unless you know what that means. The fact that we have the three chord is really unusual because the three chord in any chord, C, D, E, E minor in this case, it's kind of all of, it's often called, Jim DeVille refers to it as the heartbreak chord. It it kind of, it adds a real sadness to it. And this does, even though it's a kind of jokey, melancholic chord, uh, song, this chord's got a real heartbreak quality to it about. And if you think about it, if you match it up with the words, too scared to let you know you knew what you were looking for. It is sad at that point. So it's kind of really relevant. And you can analyse any song and find that whenever you listen to the Beatles, whenever John Lennon's girlfriends left him in a song, um, you'll tend to find that heartbreak chord come, come up. Same with Simon and Garfunkel, same with all bands. So we have E minor, the heartbreak chord. I often play E minor with an extra finger on the um, G string, just because when I'm playing low G like I am tonight, it can be quite boomy. And by adding that extra finger... It stops that boominess. But don't worry, guys, you can just do your normal um, one, two, three, going up the stairs like that, okay? Too scared to let you know. Then F and then G for tension. Too scared to let you know. You knew what you were looking for. I lied until I fit the bill. God bless the great indoors. Now, notice on the sheet down here, I've written look for patterns. The reason I've done that is that sometimes with with sheet music or any form of music, it can be quite overwhelming, all these chords. And Canicapilla is all about spotting these patterns so you can start to play things off by heart. And I want you to notice that the bottom two lines of the bridge are very similar to the bottom two lines of the verse. 
In fact, the third line of the bridge is identical to the third line of the verse. So just spotting these patterns will help. We have the F again, G, and then that quick change, C, C major 7, A minor. And then this time we hang on the F for a while. So that will sound something like this. So I'll do a bridge and then we'll start to put it all together. Two, three, four. Too scared to let you know You knew what you were looking for I lied until I fit the bill God bless the great indoors I lied about being The outdoor time I never owned a sleeping bag Let alone a mountain bike again which is really lovely now this one's um in the key of c so if you want to try a little bit of a solo um you can have a go at them as an interlude now this one is lovely the interlude are just those really short c c major seven a minor that's it we just do that twice So I wanted to talk to you tonight about doing licks. Licks and guitars are almost like little miniature solos, little motifs, and you'll just take a few notes from the relevant scale. This song's in the key of C, so we're going to use a C major pentatonic scale. And if you play that in first position, that's 0, 2 on the C string for C to D. 0, 3 on the E string, which is E to G. Let me just bring that up. And zero three on the A string, zero, that's A to C. So off two on the C string, C, D. Off three, E, G. Off three. So any of those notes in any order will fit for your licks. Of course, remember, I'm tilting my uke as well, so you can see my dots. Remember, you can also play over C major, the A minor pentatonic scale, and that's the beautiful one that matches the dots on our A string. So any of those dots will work as well. And what you want to do is just create these little kind of little riffs, if you like, or little licks, which is really sweet. Um, could sound something like this. Let me have a go. I'll play a backing track. It might not be very loud, but let's have a look. Let me turn it up, actually, so you can hear it as loud as it'll go. As loud as it'll go. So you could do something just simple like this. That's all it needs. Notice I've just got a couple of little motifs. So that was twice through that little um, that little solo. You haven't got time for a lot. So just hit a few notes, allow a bit of space, and then do it again. I'll do something. Now I love licks. When I'm playing live with people and I'm strumming away, if someone does a little, it really, it just makes me smile. So have a little go at that on the interlude, if, you, if you're brave enough, see if you can use a few notes from that, that C major scale and see if you can create a, a, li a little lick. Yeah, absolutely, Indrani. And any time you see a little triangle, it comes from jazz. It's to kind of create a really quick way of writing um, extended chords. Any time you see a triangle, just think major. So C triangle seven, C major seven, and that's your that's your one here, second fret. Okay, C, C major seven. Cool, let's give it a go then, guys. Let's try putting this all, all together. Um, if I put my UCAP like this, I think you can you can follow along. As always, if it looks like I'm staring off into the distance, it's purely because I'm looking at my lyrics that are over, over there somewhere. All right, let's, let's have a go. Remember, we can do the intro um, twice as well. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Always had a roof above me, always paid my rent. But I never set foot inside a tent. Couldn't build a fire or save my life. I lied about being the outdoor time. And I never slept out underneath the stars Closest that I came to that was the time my car Broke down for an hour in the suburbs at night I lied about being the outdoor time Too scared to let you know I lied until I fit the bill Got black, da 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 Like bless the great outdoors I lied about being the outdoor time I never owned a sleeping bag Let alone a mountain bike I can't go away with you on a rock climbing weekend. What if something's on TV and it's never shown again? Well, it's just as well I'm not invited. I'm afraid of heights. I lied about being the outdoor type. Let's make it. Never learn to swim, can't grow a bit or even fight. I lied about being the outdoor time. <laughs> there we go. Now, a couple of things I forgot to tell you about, so I might do that one more time to give you a chance to play it. Um, and hopefully I can sing the bridge without mucking it up, which is really annoying because this is like one of my favourite songs of all time. So I don't know why I got the words wrong in the bridge. A couple of things I forgot to tell you about, which I think would be really nice, so it's worth having another go, and it's super short anyway, right? Um, verse three at the end, I think the first part of that verse, it's really nice to mirror what um, Ivan Dando does on acoustic guitar. And what he does for this one is rather than strumming the first bit, he just hits each of the chords once. <laughs> okay, and it just creates this kind of drop down. I can't go away with you on a rock climbing weekend. What if something's on TV and it's never shown again? The next bit starts strumming, just as well I'm not invited. And it sounds great, right? The other thing I forgot to tell you about, which I think is super important, is at the end of the song, um, after we do the, when we do the last verse, after we do the third line, and then we do the last two lines again all right i'll explain that a bit more carefully so the last verse we play um we play the normal c c major sub a minor then the last two lines we've got f g c c major seven And then we do it again. That F, G, just the last two lines. F, G, and finish on a C. All right. I forgot to tell you about that, which is really, um, really, really super cool. Um, actually, Indrani, yeah, I've kind of become an outdoor type. I'm not sure if I was when I was 18 when I lied about it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe I've become an outdoor type over the years. Let's try that one, one more time with all that in mind. Then we'll have a bit of a break and we'll play some John Denver. Isn't it cool, Mike? Yeah, isn't it a cool song? So good we can do it again. I hope you can bear it. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, four.
Give me Always had a roof above me, always paid my rent. And I've never sat foot inside a tent. Couldn't build a fire to save my life. I lied about being the outdoor type. And I've never slept out underneath the stars Closest that I came to bed was one time my car Broke down for an hour in the suburbs at night I lied about being the outdoor time Get ready for the bridge guys To let you know You knew what you were looking for I lied until I fit the bill God bless the great indoors I lied about being The outdoor time I never owned a sleeping bag Let alone a mountain bike Get ready for the storm What if something's on TV and it's never shown again? Well, it's just as well I'm not invited. I'm afraid of heights. I lied about being the outdoor time. Never learned to swim, can't grow a bit or even fine. I lied about being the outdoor time. <laughs> Go. Hope you enjoyed that. Oh man, I love that song. I just, oh, I love it. And um, there was a really nice compilation that came out um, with all the Lemonhead songs on called the Atlantic Records. And it's kind of all their acoustic y type stuff. Everyone thinks of, um, because they, they had such a big hit with Mrs. Robinson, everyone thinks of like all their punky, loud stuff, but they had some beautiful acoustic songs. Really gorgeous. There's one called Being Around I absolutely love. And Oh, all, all sorts of beautiful tunes. So check that out if you, if you get a chance. Funny enough, you won't believe this, guys. I don't know if any of you have seen the um, TV, show, TV show alone. Um, they have it in America, um, but also they did a series on Channel 4 in the UK here. And they basically, they get people to, um, they drop people off in the Canadian wilderness um, and they're just left to survive on their own. And whoever lasts the longest um, wins £100,000. And um, I've, I've kind of, I've become like a real kind of um, nature lover and, and kind of outdoor, outdoor type over the years. And uh, we're watching it. And um, Sharon said, you could do that. The, the people, the UK lot, the guy who won it only lasted 30 days. It's like, I can build a shelter. I can build a cabin. Like I can, I can, I can forage. Like I know how to do all that stuff. So I'll probably never get chosen, but I've actually applied to be on the UK version. So, uh, so watch this space. I'll let you know if I get cho get chosen, and I'm sure I probably won't. But um, yeah, be crazy. The other day I was watching uh, YouTube videos on berries that I could eat, Canadian berries that I could eat. <laughs> And, and a video on how to build a log cabin so um, just in case they phone me up and say say they want me i can uh, i can go and prove to them that i can do it anyway let's have let's have a bit more fun um what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at annie's song which is really beautiful sorry i'm just trying to find it on the sheets a really beautiful song by john denver and um it's got some gorgeous kind of chord progressions um, in it, this one. And obviously we've got our great outdoors theme as well. So you feel it, my sense is like a night in the forest. You know, it's all metaphors, isn't it, from the great outdoors. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, cool. That's a good way of thinking about Andre. I like that. Nice, nice. 
Okay, guys, um, let me know how you got on with that as well. If you've got any questions or anything, just give us a shout. I'm always I'm always here to help. Um, and at the end of the next, next one, uh, we'll take a little break and I'll tell you about a few things as well. You can ask me some questions, um, but let's, let's have a look. Cool. Come to Bremen. Oh, that'd be neat. <laughs> okay, so this one has something that's really, really unusual, but beautiful, um, called Line Cliché. I don't know if you've ever um, heard of line cliché. Line cliché is basically where you have a, a kind of a main chord, in this case G, and then the chord changes very subtly so that there's this little melodic line within it. And this happens in the intro part of this. Can you see at the top here we've got G, G major 7, G6, G major 7, which all sound like quite fancy pants chords. By the way, you might notice that I'm starting to use certain chords a lot um, in a particular week. So do you remember last week we had all those minor 7 chords? Well, this week I've got a lot of major 7 chords because I want you to... The idea is, I might be it might be a hair, bit harebrained, but if it works, I want you to get a feel for how those chords work and kind of integrate with the other chords. So I want you to really get a flavour for how these major sevenths kind of make you feel um, today. It'd be, be really, really cool. So you'll notice that the intro, we've got, let me just come in on close cam again. We've got a G chord. <laughs> Followed by a G major 7. To play a G major 7, just flatten your finger across the 2nd fret here. And then a G6, just play your normal G major but without this finger down here. Hey Stefan, good to see you, good to see you. Yeah, that's what I was thinking Peter, yeah. They're, they're, it's for the next season so hopefully They'll be they they'll be doing it. It did say a potential new series, so maybe they won't get the right people or whatever. Anyway, here we go. So G, G major seven, G six, and back to G major seven. Now, what's happening in there is that really it's they're all types of major chords. G major, G major seven, even G six is a type of G major. It's just a G major chord with the sixth note and the scale added, which is this E note, which is why we take our finger away. But really what's happening is we're having this little mini melody going. The G remains the same, but do you hear that? And it creates a sense of movement in the chord. So rather than one, two, three, four, Oh, sorry, we're in three, uh, we're in waltz time. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That would be the intro if we just stayed on G, but adding that movement in. I'll talk about strums in a minute, guys. Just a massive um, thanks, um, special thanks to Karen for stepping into the breach this week. Because um, poor Esther was going through it last week. Um, Karen stepped into the breach and did the sheets for us. And I know she had to, um, I gave her hard ones this week, with lots of core boxes to add in. So thank you, Karen, for all your hard work. And um, a massive um, thanks to Indrani for um, checking it as well. And a huge thanks to Esther, who is back this week for all her hard work as well because we've missed the heck out of her, haven't we, guys? So Esther's, adds, Esther's back in the fold. <laughs> okay. So thanks, Karen. Really appreciate it. I know these were a lot of work. Um, so that's that's our intro. Now we're in 3-4 time for this one. At its most simplest, you could just down strum three times per measure if you wanted to. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. If you want to kind of make it a little bit more interesting, one of my favourite three, four strum patterns, dead simple, is just down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. All right. Or if you like my phonetic way of doing it, walk, running, walk, walk, running, walk, walk, running, walk, walk, running, walk, like that. Yeah. Okay. So have a little go at that. 
Yeah, Ka- Karen, I was half thinking actually, um, it's actually, I, I wonder if it's possible because of all the forest fires and everything, they might choose a different place to do it. Sharon's saying maybe they'll end up sending you to Australia out in the bush or something. Who knows? <laughs> like I say, I never get, I've never. I've I've applied for television programs before and never get never got chosen. So um, yeah. Apart from the one time that I was half naked, you're not allowed to look it up. I was half naked on a TV comedy with Lee Mack. It was called Duck Quacks Don't Echo, and. Um, I was a librarian where I, it's just a quick anecdote. I was a librarian working in South London. I think I was in Brixton at the time. And this TV company phoned up and said, we really want a librarian to come and be on this comedy TV show. And the idea was they wanted to get three different people from backgrounds that don't normally swear. So it was a librarian, a yoga therapist and a vicar. And all three of us had to have deep tissue massages, you know, the ones that really hurt. And they did it twice. And the first time we weren't allowed to swear and we had to see how long we lasted before we get. We said, no, can't take any more. And the second time we were allowed to swear at the end as loud as we wanted. And it was like, it's kind of a jokey thing, but it's scientifically interesting as well. And it genuinely turned out that if you swear, it helps. All three of us lasted longer when we were allowed to swear. So so that's my that's my moment of fame. I had all these people phoning up and saying, were you in a towel with Lee Mack, like on a television programme last night? So embarrassing. But it was amazing. Had this vicar lay next to me, the most polite person you've ever heard in your life, going, Jesus, effing. <laughs> it was just absolutely mad. Anyway, enough, enough. Right, here we go then, here we go. So let's, let's put that together and we'll just try the intro. Then I'll just show you the, the verses, which are actually not too, not too bad. So here we go. One, two, three, G, major seven, and six, major seven. Just try that a few times. Let's do a couple more times, get you comfortable. Now the verses start on the four chord, which is quite unusual normally, but because we've had so much of the one chord, we need some change, right? And we all know that the four chord in any key, because I'm always banging down about it, presents change. We're in the key of G now, so the four chord, G, A, B is C, and that's what comes up first. So we have the four chord offering a bit of a change. Then we have the D chord. Then the E minor. Now he's doing one of Bob Dylan's favourite tricks that we learned from the other week. He's he's doing the numbers of the key in succession, the four chord, the five chord, then the six chord. It creates almost like this climbing feel. Four, five, six, back to the four chord. And then the middle part of the verse is the same as the intro bit we just played. Exactly the same. Then the next part of the verse is interesting because it's kind of like you imagine it's going to do the same thing. It starts on the C chord. And then we get the three chord, which is would normally be a B minor. John Denver turns it into a B minor seven, which gives it more kind of sophisticated sound, which is really pretty. So C, B minor seven, all you need to do is just bar the whole of the second fret. And then this one comes down to A. So this time, can you see the numbers? I think it's really fascinating. This line we go um, up, four, five, six. This time we come down, four, three, two. So he's playing about with our ears, which is gorgeous. C, B minor, seven, A minor, and C. And then the five chord, when it comes up in any key, this time as a D7, is all about creating tension. And you'll feel it because it goes on for four whole measures. Creates a sense of tension. Let's try a go at one of those so you can see how it works. Come in on the word senses. 
You fill up my senses like a night in the forest. Say the same intro, huh? Like the mountains in spring time, like a walk in the rain. Now the next verse starts the same way, like a storm in the desert, like a sleepy blue ocean, same as before. The only change now is after this line, you fill up my senses. We only have the five chord for one measure. Come fill me again. Then we hit that one chord, which makes it feel resolved. That shows the power of the five chord, creating tension, and the one chord, resolving it. The second time the song feels resolved and relaxed. Okay? And that's basically it. We go from verse one to verse two. Then we're going to have an instrumental, and all we're going to do is we're going to play both verses A and B again. All right? So verse A, um, sorry, I'm not explaining that very well. I'll do that again. We do verse 1 is part A and part B. Then we do another verse, which is part A and part B again. Then we're going to do an instrumental verse, which is part A and part B. See in the pattern? <laughs> and then we do... A verse three, which again is part A and part B. So basically, you go bum, 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 just again and again, going from part A to part B. All right, it really is, it really is that simple. If you'd like to try a solo on this one, I wanted to try you a show you a couple of things. Um, this one is in the key of G major. So here we go, Indrani, your favourite. You could use the G major pentatonic scale. This is all on your scales reference sheet, which you can download for free. Um, a link in the description or at the start of the comments. And please tell me that's not true. Please, 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 please tell me that's not true. Oh my god. I genuinely had no idea about the S note. I, I thought it was a long forgotten show. Please don't. Please don't. Don't giggle that, whatever you do. It wasn't called that thing. It was called uh, something else. <laughs> oh gosh. Right. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. I thought, Oh my goodness. No way, Esther, no way. Oh, right. Back to it. Back to G major pentatonic scale. Enough of that nonsense. <laughs> it goes from the seventh fret to the ninth fret of the C string. That's G to A. Then it carries on from the seventh fret to the tenth fret. Okay. Which is B to D. And then it plays the 7th and the 10th on the A string, which is E to G. So it's 7, 9, G, A, 7, 10, B, D, and then 7, 10. The reason we use pentatonic scales, I know I talk, we've done this a lot, but some people might not realise. The reason we do pentatonic scales, they're five note scales, and they take out two of the notes, the um, the fourth and the seventh note of a major key that clashes with some of the chords. So by playing just these five notes, um, it avoids any of those clashes. You can do a full major scale and it can sound really nice, but you've just got to be a bit more careful about your note choices. So those are the notes that you can, you can use. You can also pair that up with the E minor pentatonic scale, which is its relative minor. That's four, seven, five, seven. You guys are killing me. I can't even go look because I've got to run this session. Oh, man, this is killing me, man. Okay, so four, seven. I'm never going to live this down. Five, seven, five, seven. Sharon always tells me that I talk too much during these things, and that's just evidence of that. Over Sharon. <laughs> okay, so you can pair those up, which is really nice. Now, 
for some of you, that might be quite a lot to cope with at the moment because you might be new to it. And if that's the case, just pick maybe a couple of simple notes, um, something like... That's just using that little rectangle. Now, for those that are more advanced and you've been doing your can of capillas for been doing my can of capillas for a while, I wanted to show you something where you could take your soloing. Like, just think about it um, and how it resolves. Do you remember when I was describing this section and this section? I talked about the power of that five chord and adding the tension. And the main difference between this section and that section is this one finishes with a five chord, D7. This one finishes with the one chord, G. So when you're soloing, see if you can kind of end this section here. See if you can end it with the D, um, the D note, okay? So that's, you could play that there, the fifth fret of the A string. Whatever you do, a noodle and roll. See if you can work your way back to that D. And of course you could play the low D here as well. When you finish the next section with your solo, try and bring it back to the root, the G note there, or you could do your open G or back here. I'll show you what I mean. I don't know if, how well this will come across on the internet, but I'll, I'll try my best. I'll show, you, I'll, I'll show you an idea and I'll tell you when I'm about to hit the D so you get the idea. So I'd start my solo. About to hit the D. There. This my G. See how the solo felt really finished when I ended it on that G note. So that's a little something you can have a little think about. See if you can head towards the D note at the end of this one and head towards your G note with your solo on this one. So, um, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no, Shona. <laughs> hey, Shona, you're keeping well. I don't normally share that many secrets in these. <laughs> Shona's one of my wonderful, wonderful students. She comes and sits in this very room and has um, ukulele lessons with me. And now she's seen me <laughs> in a towel with Lee Mack on television. Oh, my goodness. Right. I, I think Shona, I'm gonna be, I don't think I'm, I'm going to have to have a screen between us in the next lesson. I'll be too embarrassed. <laughs> Just teasing. Right. Let's have a go at putting all that together then, folks. So remember, it goes intro and then A, B, A, B, A, B, just again and again. And then have a real go at that solo if you can. Enjoy yourselves and, and have a go. Here we go. All right. So intro to start with. I think I'll come in on close camera on this one so you can see what's happening with my, with my fingers. Here we go. One, two, three, G. Up my senses, 
Come fill me again. Come let me love you. Let me give my life to you. Let me drown in your laughter. Let me die in your arms. Let me lay down beside you. Let me always be with you. Come, let me love you. Come, love me again. Take a solo, guys. One, two, three. If you're strumming, we're just going to do part B. Keep soloing if you're soloing. Okay, out of your solos, here comes first three. You fill up my senses like a night in the forest, like the mountains in spring time, like a walk in the rain, like a storm in the desert. Like a sleepy blue ocean, you fill up my senses. Oh, smoke, come fill me again. I'd like to add a little sus note on the G there. Fantastic. Well done, everyone. So that's uh, isn't that uh, an absolutely beautiful tune? I, I've um, I kind of I don't want to offend anyone, but I've never been massively into John Denver and all that. Um, I don't know why, I just find it a bit cheesy. Um, but that's fine. A lot of people find my music cheesy, so that's all good, right? Um, but that's just a really undeniably beautiful tune, isn't it? And it's kind of one of the things that I love about doing these kind of capilla shows that sometimes we can be snobby or kind of not necessarily snobby, but kind of kind of in a rut with our music. You know, we kind of only listen to a particular type of music. We've got our favorite, our favorite performers and stuff. And um, I'm really guilty of that. Now, I've got an iPod Um I used to think that was like the height of kind of technology, but now that's like really old fashioned. My daughter would just kind of disown me if she knew I listened to music on an iPod. Anyway, I've got all the, all my records on this iPod and I find myself listening to like the same few artists. So I just go to them again and again because they're the ones I think of. And when you do stuff like this, you realise how beautiful some of these songs are and how well crafted they are. And it, I think it kind of makes you appreciate them on another level, which is really, um, really interesting. And and that's one of those. Um, chapeau, like Andre says, chapeau uh, to John Denver. You listen to it, you think, yeah, fair play. That's really clever. I love those rising chords and the falling chords and the line cliche, which is really nice. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. And John is right. Um, a bit of cheese is, is, is never a bad thing, is it? So, yeah, that's all cool. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Now, this one is kind of interesting. Um, this one, ah, uh, lovely. Thanks, Mike. That's really nice. That's good. That's good to hear. And uh, like I said, I don't blame him. It's a be it is a absolutely beautiful song. Uh, 
Um, our next song is quite an unusual one. We're going to have a look at Night Swimming by R.E.M. This is kind of fa kind of fascinating because you notice there aren't many chords in it. The other thing that's fascinating in this is there's no verses and choruses. So this is quite an unusual one. Um, it's one that we did for my last live lesson on a Wednesday. So if you missed it, if you go to my website, mattsteadukulele.com, um, there's an archive of all my live lessons I do every other Wednesday. So you can go there and find it. And what we did there is we introduced these lovely kind of little instrumental um, chord melody parts, which we won't have time to do tonight. But I will show you a cool little um, intro part and I'll, I'll show you how to finger pick this one. Now, just quickly whilst I'm on the break, um, just to remind you guys um, that a couple of things. First off is that I've created a couple of ukulele forums and I would love you guys. So, oh, sorry, kicking table. I'd love you guys to come and join in the conversation. So it's at mattsteadukulele.com and if you go to the website, you can head over there and you'll find um, you'll find uh along the top links of the menu you'll find forum listed and it's um for um members of the website but anyone can join up as well to the to the forum um to chat about ukulele stuff so we've already had some brilliant discussions on low g ukes um concert scare uh, super super soprano ukuleles we've talked about the songs we've been doing and all that sort of stuff so if you're interested, um, get over to mattsteadukulele.com and join in the forum because I think it'd be fantastic. I'm trying to kind of make the website a real hub for everyone. So rather than having, you know, you go to YouTube for this and then Facebook for that and then you go to my website for another thing and all of my stuff will be available in one place. So all of the live lessons are listed here. You can find the links, all of the Kanakabilas, all of my courses are on there. And that's the other thing I just wanted to mention as well, that I've started, I've done my first two videos for a new course. I haven't done a new course for over a year, partly because I've been consolidating and getting everything on this website. But we're going to do a new finger style course, which I'm really, really super excited about. And I've done a couple of introduction videos on posture with finger style playing, how best to angle the fingers, all that stuff. And then next week we're going to do... lovely instrumental piece that I wrote called Psy Waltz. In fact, I say next week, I'm hoping to record the video by the end of this week, so it might be up even before then. And um, subscribers get it for free, and the first few are going to be free anyway. So get on over over there and, and check it out. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you'll see it all there. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, I, it's one of my favourite songs as well, so I really enjoy it. Hi, Betty. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Oh, cool. Nice. So it's an instrumental version. Um, Andre's put the link in the description if you want to check that out later, guys, um, for a nice finger style version. I'll check that out. That sounds really good. Um, I love to learn um, other finger style pieces from other teachers. I think it's a really brilliant thing to do. Keep your hand in and keep things interesting. OK, then, guys, let's have a look at night swimming, then what's happening. I'll talk you through the chords first and then I'm going to show you how to finger pick this one. And I'm also going to show you a lovely little riff, which hopefully you're going to really enjoy playing because I think it's I think it's beautiful. But we'll have a look at the chords first. Let me just find it a second. There we go. One more. There it is. Fabulous. So this one we're in the key of G again, just like we were with the John Denver piece. And notice we've got, um, oh, for some reason I've knocked my camera down. Let me just, oh, I'm on close camera, that's why. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I was wondering why you couldn't see my face. Um, so this one, we're in the key of G, and it features the main chords that you get in any key, which are the one, four, five chords. They're the most powerful chords in any key. One being the tonic, it means it's rooted, it takes you home, you feel resolved when you get to it. Four being the change chord, if you're in for your, in to your fancy pants terms, it's called the subdominant chord, because it's kind of next most dominant after the five chord. Don't, don't sweat that. I think of it as a change chord, which is a more interesting term for it, I think. 
And then we've got the five chord, the dominant chord, and that's the one that makes you want to go back to the one chord. And you can see them at play here. We have the one chord setting out a stall at the start. We've got the change chord, just adds a bit of variety. And the five chord makes you want to go back. And notice again, I keep saying this, notice the five chord is almost always um, followed by the one chord. Then we go to the C chord again. Now we've got an A9 here, a really interesting extended chord. The, an A9, believe it or not, it's just an A7 with the ninth note of the A major scale added. And you might think, oh, but the major scale only has seven notes. You just keep counting, you go into the next note, and we call it the ninth. On a piano, you could just keep playing higher, right? That's all that one is. That's a beautiful chord. This one, for me, this almost makes the song, this chord, really beautiful. Then we go to a C major seven. See what I did? I'm trying to keep these themes going. Now, a C major seven is, is another type of major chord. A major seven takes a major triad, one, three, five, and it adds the seventh note of the scale. It's not quite as unresolved as a dominant chord, like a normal seventh. Like if you, if you just had C7 written, that would just be a normal seventh, otherwise known as a dominant seventh. That kind of creates a sense of um, kind of um, it, it needs resolving. Whereas this, the major seven still feels resolved. But it does have a sophisticated, kind of almost like a floating quality to it, which is really beautiful. The reason that um, it was, I think it was Mike Mills who wrote um, this one. I thought it was Peter Buck, and in my tutorial I kept mentioning Peter, but it was actually Mike. Um, I mean, it's Mike who plays the piano. The reason he goes to the C major 7 is it's only one note different from the A9. So it's kind of a really clever way of getting there. And then we go to the five chord for tension. So just to get used to it, I just want you to strum these straight eights. You can strum down the pad of your thumb. One and two and three and four and. We call them straight eights because there's eight strums if you do it at that speed in a measure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But we count it. One and two and three and four and. Okay. Let's try one of the verses, and you'll see that we just keep doing that round and round and round. Let's give it a go. One and two and three and four and G, and two and three and four and C, D, G, C, A9, C major 7, Notice my fingers. When I go from this C to the A9, notice I just slide back and then add that extra finger down. Take it away from that one. Night swimming. Deserves a quiet night. Just round and round like that. And in terms of the chord, that's all that happens. It's kind of, to my mind, that's what makes this song so beautiful. There's no kind of big chorus, no kind of uh, verse. It just, oh. Yeah, sounds like I'm dreaming here. Yeah, you got it, Barbara. It just kind of winds and weaves its way along, kind of like a river. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And I think the lyrics are really um, beautiful in this one as well. Um, he, he actually wrote it about skinny dipping when he was younger um, around Athens. And there's some really nice um, facts about that in Karen's brilliant, fabulous, fa uh, fascinating facts in, in the back. Um, it's abs absolutely beautiful. And I'm not going to talk about whether I've been skinny dipping enough. I've already talked about me and a towel, so <laughs> that, that's to your imaginations. I'm not going any further tonight. <laughs>
I will say it brings back memories. That's all I'll say. Right. <laughs> okay. Let's have a look. Um, let's have a look at what happens with these verses. Now, can you see down here we've got these listed um, with, an, with the amount of times we play them? So verse one, we play that progression four times. Verse two, only three times. Verse three, three times. Verse four and five, only twice. And you might think, oh, my goodness, that's like, oh, that's way too complicated. You don't even have to get, doesn't even have to be that complicated. All you need to do is keep playing those chords round and round and stop at the relevant moments. I'll show you where and that's all you've got to do. Don't worry about counting whether you've played it twice or three or four times or anything like that. Just just keep just keep counting. All right. So we just keep that going and round and round and round. Now, I like to do a picking pattern on this one. And I'll show you that kind of interlude bit in, in a minute. But um, for, the, for the picking pattern, on a low G like I am tonight, I like to go from the top, the string nearest your nose, the G string, to the string nearest the floor, the A string. Now, that's one and two and. So that means you're going to do that twice per measure. Okay, just like that, round and round. And it's really effective. Night swimming deserves a quiet night. Isn't that beautiful? Just keep that going. Now, if you're on a high G uke, um, you could do that, that classic inside-outside pattern that we're often teaching you. So um, rather than top to bottom, you would play the C string, E string, G string, and then the A string. Um, if I come in on close camera again, it will look something like this. I'm just going to put this one down. Okay, so that would look like this. And I, I often just use my thumb and index finger for this. Sl my G slightly out of tune, but you get the idea. The reason I like that on high G is it goes from your lowest note to your next highest, to your next highest, to your highest. So high G, I like inside outside. Low G, I like top to I like top to bottom basically, which is also your lowest note to your highest note. Okay, I'm going to play low G, but if you want to pick along, um, and you've got high G, it will complement it. So you can do you, it doesn't matter; it will still work. So you can you can pick along, and it will work. Oh, it's all coming out now, Andrani. Glad it's not just me. <laughs> That's good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> My mine was in a fjord in Norway. That was my that's the, that's the best time ever. Okay, um, it's very cold. That's all I say. Right, um, moving swiftly on. Now you've also got a beautiful, beautiful intro part, um, which is really, really simple. Now, um, we've got this tabbed out, um, and again, thanks, thanks for doing that, um, Karen. That's really, um, really kind because that again is extra complicated this week. What we're doing is we're holding down a G chord and we're going to play the following notes. Let me come in on close camera rather than holding it up. Sorry, guys. That's better, isn't it? So we hold down a G chord and we play the inside two strings. Then we play the G string and the E string. Again, mine's low G, so it sounds slightly different. But So middle two. G string, E string, and then we hit the bottom string. I've put an open A there, but actually you could just keep your finger on a G if you want. If you want to. Um, but the way I've written it, take the chord off in between, going to a C, like that. It's just four notes from a G chord, open A, and strum a C. Now, can you see it says tap, tap, but this is done on the piano. But you can do it on your uke. Just give, you a, give it a double tap. Okay. Then we do the same thing on a G. 
only this time you go to a D chord. That beautifully shows these chords. Home, change, home, tension that needs to be relieved by going back to the G at the start of the next line, right? And that's that's a really it's a really beautiful part to add. Now, on the um, the kind of the proper chord melody lesson, we also had this lovely kind of instrumental part. Oh, I'm on the wrong bit, sorry. Now those are going to be too tough to teach you tonight, but if you'd like to learn that that version, um, you can you can go back and you can watch that live lesson again. Now the only thing I will say is um, with the instrumental part, um, when if you want to do a little solo, you can use your G major pentatonic scale, um, just like you did with um, with uh, the song earlier that's in the key of G. The only thing is, when we do the instrumental version, I don't want you to put that D in um, on the second measure. It's the only change. So when we do the instrumental, you'll pick G, if you're just picking the chords, G, then C, and G, then C A9. So it's exactly the same as the as the normal verses, only you don't put that D in. All right, just 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 to kind of um, just to make sure we don't trip over each other. And if you like, I'll play the instrumental parts. So the interludes, the bit that you can play, because I've taught you, comes at the start and also wherever it says interlude. The instrumental part, the bit that I was just playing, um, comes after the interlude after verse four. And then there's also an end part at the end, which I'll try and play for you. OK, so you can listen to it. So um, we're going to go verse one, interlude, verse two, straight into verse three, straight into verse four, interlude, which is this bit. We do the stoppy bit. I'll do a little instrumental. Or you can just have a little bit of a solo. And then we'll do final verse and then a little interlude to finish off. It's absolutely beautiful. OK, so just see if you can you can give it your best. Now, uh, Karen, to remind, I'm glad you said that, Karen, because um, it's, it's really, really important that I say this. If you struggle with picking patterns, particularly with these changes, you can always come back to it later and practice them. But if you want to play along, just strum. All right. One, two, three. You'll still enjoy it and it still sounds absolutely beautiful. That'll sound something like this. Night swimming deserves a quiet night. Okay, you guys just keep strumming if you want. You don't have to finger pick. All right, see what you feel like. Okay. Let's give it a go then, guys. So I think I should probably stay on close cam for this one so you can see what chord we're on. All right, let's give it our, give it our best. This is the probably simple in terms of chords, but in terms of the way the song works, probably the most complex we've done in a long time. So let's just give it, give it our best, okay? Here comes the intro, and then we'll hit verse one, two, three, four. <laughs> Night swimming deserves a quiet night. The photograph on the dashboard taken 
years ago Turned around backwards so the windshield shows Every street light reveals a picture in reverse Still it's so much clearer I forgot my shirt and The water's edge The moon is low tonight Is our internet Night swimming deserves a quiet night. Not sure all these people understand. It's not like years ago. The fear of getting caught, of recklessness. Water, they cannot see me naked. These things they go away, replaced by every day. Night swimming, remembering that night. September's coming soon. I'm pining for the moon What if there were two Side by side in orbit Around the fairest sun That bright side Forever drunk Could not describe night swimming You, I thought I knew you. You, I cannot judge. You, I thought you knew me this one. Laughing quietly underneath my breath. Night swimming. Photograph reflects every street light a reminder. Night swimming deserves a quiet night. Deserves a quiet night. There we go. Hope you enjoyed that. Quite quite an unusual one, wasn't it, for Canicapila? But um oh gosh, I, I find it really beautiful. <laughs> I find it absolutely beautiful. I kind of I love that melancholy. Um and I love the fact that it's not like you kind of think, oh, I've written about skinny dipping. It's gonna be like really daft and like really uh, kind of celebrating youth. But he's obviously kind of kind of mellow he's got that mellow melancholy reminiscing about it but also that kind of talk about doing it you know as a grown-up 
that whole thing kind of um it's not like it used to be the recklessness of youth they cannot see me naked god that's really beautiful i i just think that, i just think it's an absolutely gorgeous song and when you listen to mike's piano part there's a lovely version that i talked about when we did the um the live lesson um and it's just mike um is it mike mike mills yeah, I think it is, on piano, and then there's just Michael Stipe singing, and oh, it's just beautiful, he just sings it so perfectly, and the piano is just absolutely gorgeous on it, so um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you'll, you'll enjoy that. Um, that's actually one of my, um, that's probably one of my funeral songs, you know, it's like in my top five of all time, so um, yeah. Absolutely love it. That sounds really morbid funeral, but I actually mean it as a celebration. It's like, you know, I've got my top top few songs of all time that I hope Sharon knows that I'd like played if, if anything bad ever happened to me. I think that's just absolutely beautiful, that one. So yeah, let me know how you how you got on with that, guys. So um yeah. Ah, oh, thank you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Andreas. Lovely to hear. Thank you. Thanks, Pam. We'll see. We'll see you soon. Good to see you again. You, you take. You take care. You take care. Cool. Thanks, Peter. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, picking pattern takes a bit of time to get, doesn't it, Indrani? It's um, it's it's a little bit tricky, but you'll get there. Just take your time with it. You know, with all these things, take it super slow. Be patient with yourself as well, because the, the more you get frustrated, the more difficult it is. So take it slow. And you'll get there. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, thanks, Shona. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to have you here, Shona. That's really special. Thank you for joining in. Yeah, absolutely lovely, isn't it? Okay, then, guys. Now, from the sublime to the ridiculous. <laughs> so every um, every uh, week, you'll know that uh, Karen um, runs a poll on Facebook, and you guys get to choose your people's choice. Um, the song that we've done before from the songbook that you'd like to tackle again. And um, just to make my life hard, you always choose the hardest ones. So remember that. If anyone ever says my can of are tough, you guys choose the hardest ones to do. It's, it's guaranteed every time. And this one, my goodness, the chords aren't too hard, but this is such a hard one to sing. We're going to do a bit of Blue Oyster Cult and um, Don't Fear the Reaper, which is... Let's be honest, it's a Stonewall classic song, isn't it? Absolutely love it. And you know all these crazy little sayings we've got? So you know how um, when Esther's here and we have the quiz, she does like, you have to find the lemon, because I always say easy peasy lemon squeezy. And we've got my glasses and we've got pants because of the pants book that we performed together at the retreat and all that sort of stuff. Well, the reason there's cowbell is because of this next song. And it all comes from the sketch from Saturday Night Live. It's the classic one. Those of you will have seen it. I've got a fever and the only thing that's going to cure it is more cowbell. <laughs> it's an absolute classic sketch. You have to watch it if you get a chance. Just put Saturday Night Live um, and uh, Don't Fear the Reaper or more cowbell and you'll get it, which is an absolute classic. And it always makes me laugh and brings me to tears in a different way to night swimming. It always brings me to tears of laughter. So that's what that's all about. And the reason they make the whole joke about it is the most famous song about thing about this song is it has cowbell constantly all the way through it. And I know Karen bought a cowbell especially, so I hope you're going to do us a version of this, Karen, and I want to hear cowbell on it, that's, that's for sure. Oh, thank you, Esther. You're very kind. Yeah, I always forget to say, don't I? If um, if anyone's um w would like to support the running costs of the channel, um, that would be super super kind. And you guys are always um super generous, even if I don't mention it. Um, the links are um you can either paypal.me forward slash ukraine or there's links in the description um or the early um comments where you can get me a virtual cup of tea. A virtual high five and um as always thank you to everyone that did this week um it's greatly greatly appreciated um it keeps me going and um my kids aren't really that skinny but um it, it does it does keep them in milkshakes and food for the week <laughs> so <laughs> there you go oh dear just reminded me that in my old i seem to be reminiscing and admitting things that i shouldn't um, I used to be in a garage band and I used to think we were like so rock and roll. Uh, and um, 
the the first um the first ever proper um review he had in the national press in the enemy it said they're very good but the singer sounds like he's been raised on milkshakes his whole life and i had so you know fair enough sorry i i, I didn't grow up on whiskey and cigarettes i did grow up on milkshake so um so yeah keep my kids in, in milkshake i'll keep the whiskey away from them okay so let's bring it up on screen there's there's a fair few things to tell you about with this one uh, let's just find it first and of course don't forget as well um, perhaps um, normally I get um, Karen or Indrani or Esther to give the answers to the quiz but this quiz we, we've got a slightly different one some brilliant brilliant um, fascinating facts um, here thanks Indrani for the lovely photos as well we've got going on this week which some beautiful beautiful photos this one is especially especially special to me because um, Indrani did me a print of this sketch and I have it up in my uke room behind me you might even be able to see it actually um, so uh, yeah thanks thanks for that Indrani it's really really super cool and uh, the puzzles we've got a word search this week and the answers are here so you can you can go and have a go at that. Plus, we've got the cow bowed the welly and the pants hidden in the sheets. So you can go and have a look at that. So that'd be that'd be fun. <laughs> Thanks, Esther. I know, I know. I don't know what it is. I think it's the weird thing, right? Because I'm talking to a screen and I know you're all there listening. But I kind of I feel like I have to keep talking because I don't want that like blank empty space like radio silence. So I think sometimes I just tell say things that I shouldn't just to fill in the space and my, my mouth runs away. And then my mind catches up about two minutes later with like, did I really say that? <laughs> yeah, crazy. Oh, yeah, Mike, back in the day, my first band, we, we weren't like mega successful in film, but we, we had a few reviews in The Enemy. We um, we were called The Mighty Stars. We got we got um, we got played on radio one a few times by Steve Lamack and John Peel, um, but it never really came to anything. It, it was, um, but it was good fun whilst it lasted. We got to tour Europe. That was the best thing and have loads of fun. OK, so let's let's have a look oh yeah Indrani I absolutely love it yeah I absolutely love it thank you okay so let's have a look at what's happening with the chords of this one now most of this song is the same four chords over and over so this one um we're gonna we're in the key of a minor unusually this is a minor key song so I think rather than going too much detail about the chords on this one because they're a little bit all over the place let me just show them to you so we have a minor for two beats then we go to g for two f for two and g for two and we just keep going around like that a g f Largely, that's like most of the verses um, round and round. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Ask me about Indie Fjord at the end and I'll tell you. If I, that would be really embarrassing. <laughs> but uh, uh, or, or I'll listen to Lindsay and embrace the silence. <laughs> Les Sorry, I called you Lindsay then, Leslie. Sorry, being daft. Sorry, Leslie. Um, so, so, yeah, keep that going round and round. They can either do straight eights like that, or I think even easier, just strum up and down. And just round and round. All that time, self come. Just keep it going round. as well. Now the only, I say the only other part, the main other part is when we get to this pre-chorus and it's the third and fourth line almost of every verse. We have this lovely section where we go F, G, A minor, seasons don't fear the reaper. And then F, E7, A minor, which is really nice. Nor do the wind and the rain. 
So that's F, G, A minor, F, E7. Now, the next bit where it goes A minor, G, F, G, it's just this bit again. So if in doubt, just keep strumming those chords. Chorus F G A minor F E seven and we're back to the chords like this again round and round again round and round right now the interlude in the solo goes absolutely mad in the song so I'm going to keep it really simple tonight we're literally going to strum it as I've written it just two measures of F minor two of G seven. And we're going to do this twice. And then we're going to go back to that. Round and round like that. Okay, okay. Um, Finally, I'm rushing this a bit because we're coming towards the end, but I want to make sure we do it. We've got this riff that you can put in the um, Esther tapped out back in the day. So we've got this C, C, E, A, and then we just hit that G note. So you can play that any time we're doing a da 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 any of those um any time we're playing that bit instrumentally. All right. Um just quickly, Peter's reminded me about something really important. I don't want to leave it to the end when everyone disappears. Um Craig and Sarah, um Craig Chi and Sarah Mays out have a wonderful oh my gosh it's just going to be amazing they've got an amazing concert that's happening on the 16th of september and it's like so many so many great ukulele players are doing songs and little messages and things so um i was too shy to do a whole song so i'm just a, there's a little message and a little snippet of a song off me i kind of had um inferiority complex because there are there are some amazing players doing some proper amazing stuff so i was like I'm just going to stay humble. I just do a couple of riffs and a little message. But um, it's all to raise money for the Maui recovery after the wildfires. Um, and it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful concert. Wonderful, wonderful course. So please back it. The details are on my Facebook page. And you can also look up Craig Chi and Sarah Maisel. So I'll put another reminder tomorrow when I'm on Facebook. I'll put another link up so you can follow it. Um, it honestly, the concert is just going to be mind blowing. You should see the list of people playing. It's just going to be amazing. It's kind of like going to be the ukulele version of Live Aid. I think it's just going to be absolutely amazing. So there we go. <laughs> All right, then let's let's have a let's have a, a go at this one and see if we can we can put this together now i always kind of fall apart on this one because there's a bit where there's like a hundred million syllables in um in one of the verses no worries barbara see you next monday hopefully um if if not before you take you take care i put that up on there so um yeah brilliant fantastic i'm i i think i'm there in the list andre i think i'm there somewhere i should be anyway i was on the post dry so <laughs> Hopefully, but I don't do a lot, so um, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> okay, um, but yeah, ukulele benefit concert, sixteenth of September, guys. So come and come and join them. Okay, so let's let's have a go. As I say, this will all crumble apart. It will just be a laugh at the end. If I go wrong, please forgive me. This is so hard to sing and play at the same time, but I will just try my best. Let's give it a go. <laughs> Should we give it a go? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, we'll do a couple of instrumental verses just to just to get going as well. To make it harder, I haven't even got the sheet in front of me. What have I done with that? There we go. I've got Annie's song and then the lyrics to Don't Fear the Reaper. That could have been an interesting combination. Okay, here we go. I've put her off long enough. One, two, three, four. Come on, baby, don't fear the reason. 
Said she, um, she said she got lost. Now, to be fair, I don't blame her because the teacher got lost as well. I have no idea what happened. I'm so sorry, guys. I just find that so hard. Even though it's the same few chords, the words are just all over the place, aren't they? I think I think it didn't help the fact that I think really the the bit in brackets are kind of backing vocals, but I tried to sing them at the same time as the main vocals. So there we go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that anyway, even though it's absolutely nuts. And do look up the um, the Saturday night um, live sketches. Absolutely, absolutely wonderful. 
So I'm going to stick around for um, just another five, ten minutes or so, um, just, to, just to see if there's any questions or anything. Um, it looks like people have fun. <laughs> Moo! More cowbell! <laughs> And that was the that was the main thing that we have fun and I feel super super cool <laughs> and that's one of the things that I love I, I kind of I hope you get this I kind of um the only kind of it's not a regret but the only thing that I kind of I'm sometimes a little sad about with Kana Kapila is that you guys are such a big part of it and I just wish I kind of had you in the room with me and uh, we could all have a we could all have a pint of beer or um, or a coca-cola and, and just kind of have a laugh and play together it's the only thing I one day I'd love to get everyone from that joins in these kind of capillas in one big room and we'd have a big party and play these together but it means so much to me that you guys follow along and you send me your lovely comments and I know that you're strumming along at home it means so much to me so thank you it kind of feels like one big party even if I can't sing and hear you so that's the main thing I wanted I wanted to to share with you so um yeah as I say I'll, I'll stick around for a little while yeah there would be a way of doing a zoom wouldn't it and then I could kind of bring people on um which could be fun let's see if I can work out how to do that I know what we'll do you know how we did a Christmas special last year and we did a retreat special didn't we um when we had everyone over for the retreat and the oh just had a bit of lightning uh, we had everyone over for the for the retreat and whatnot. Um, let's make this Christmas. Why don't we have a special Zoom party this Christmas? It gives me time to work out how to do it, if nothing else. Um, but I'll see if I can make that happen. Then we could bring everyone on screen. I think that would be really fun, wouldn't it? So um, I'll look into that and we'll make it happen. We'll have a, we'll have a Zoom party. I think that would be absolutely, absolutely fun. Absolutely fantastic. So, um, yeah, cool. Go. thank you thanks Shona thanks guys oh thank you Karen you're an abs absolute star that's brilliant and of course we'll be back next week as well folks um, I'm not disappearing yet but just a reminder um uh, we there's one week in October when I'm away which I think is the last week of October before Halloween um because I always take the family away for a week that week we go down to Devon just for a bit of a bit of respite before the Christmas madness starts um so apart from that we'll be here every Monday so um it would be lovely if you guys um head, head back next Monday um and also don't forget my next the Wednesday next week as well we've got our live lesson with Caravan which is going to be absolutely absolutely fantastic yay the Christmas zoo fantastic <laughs> yeah well Peter I had you in the same room didn't I for the retreat special that was really nice as well Leslie in all seriousness um Leslie's just asked about to do to do a ukulele cruise um if we can make that happen, I that would be like a dream. I would love to do that. Uh, it's something that I thought about um because I know Sarah and Craig do them. Oh, I wonder if there's a way of making it happen. It's I I wouldn't know where to start with organising it. Something like that, Leslie. I'm good on dry land and everything, but if you know any estate agents or anything, or if you know how it works with other lot, um, let me know. I I would I would like i would be there with bells and whistles teaching on a ukulele cruise that'd be like the best thing in the world i also do want to come over to america as well i know i sometimes joke about it but i genuinely would like to do it so if you guys know of any festivals that might be interested in having me um get in touch with them and, and perhaps perhaps let them know and I, maybe i could get in touch with them as well so oh hi gail yay we got a newbie <laughs> fantastic it's always great to see new people and thank you gail that's brilliant that's brilliant indrani's off for dinner i was a bit um i was a bit naughty i had a, i had a donut before the um lesson started not meant to be doing that my doctor's gonna tell me off but sometimes my i have to eat something before the start can of canicabila because it's um it's nearly eight o'clock now. By the time I get home, it's like half past eight. And I, if I don't eat something before can of Kapila, I'll be halfway through a song. It's okay if it's like, don't feel reaper, right? You don't hear it. But on night swimming, it's like, oh, oh. <laughs> it's just so embarrassing. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Shona will tell you, she, she's one of my physical students that comes in here to actually have um, lessons in real person. And uh, I'm on intermittent fasting at the moment. And bless her, she sits through my lessons with me going Brrr, all the time. <laughs> Craziness. Anyway, I'm going to, I'm talking nonsense again. So I'm going to love you, love you and leave you. And um, I'll see you next, I'll see you next uh, week for another special canopy. I love this one tonight. It's been huge fun, hasn't it? We'll have loads of fun next time as well. Take care for everyone. I'm sending all my love. I'll see you on the forums and see you on Facebook. And we will catch up soon. Take care.